My name is Krzysztof Cichoń and um, I am mainly senior consultant at uh, Remedo Labs. Uh, I am responsible for the consulting training development in the area of uh, wireless communications and uh, especially 5G. Uh, Remedo Labs is a spin-off of the Poznan University of Technology and it is a consulting and research company focusing on wireless communications, 5G and beyond open run millimeter wave, IoT, Wi-Fi. So these are our main topics. And uh, my uh, speech today is uh, related to 5G millimeter wave. So first, uh, who am I? Who is Krzysztof Sihoń? I work uh, at uh, Poznan University of Technology, uh, where I am an adjunct assistant professor. I am, have, uh, I am researcher there and I'm also uh, the teacher. Um, I would like to give greetings to my students uh, who are also, uh, some of them are present, and also to my co-workers. And uh, then, um, additionally to this, I am also a trainer and consultant at Remedo, as I uh, put it into uh, as I put it into introduction. This and finally, I am also work. Uh, um, I am the uh, R and D advisor at uh, Blair Technologies, uh, which is the company working in the AR and VR field. Mm, and uh, specifically, it is also uh, related to cloud-based solutions and uh, precise 5G millimeter wave modeling. And the simulations are um, done uh, by the simulator from uh, this uh, company. Uh, where is Poznań? So Poland is, uh, well, in the center of Europe. Here you can see uh, the, some photos from Poznań. Uh, quite unusual thing of our city is that uh, it has two castles, uh, it's uh, pretty interesting, and uh, Poznań is uh, 500,000 inhabitants. And uh, also the PUT campus, uh, this is the university campus, where also Rimedo has uh, our office. Uh, we have uh, about 18,000 students. Uh, moving to the topic. Um, so, um, first I would like to draw uh, some information about uh, millimeter wave, what is it and uh, how it is related to 5G system. So let's start with the simple uh, frequency line where you um, can see some uh, frequency portions. And in uh, standard uh, release 16 of 5G new radio, you can uh, find mainly three new spectrum portions. The first one, 0 0.7 gigahertz, which is called uh, low spectrum, then we have 3.4 till 3.6 gigahertz, which is called mid spectrum. And finally, we also have uh, some bandwidth uh, related to the uh, higher spectrum portions. And here, for example, I draw N257 uh, bandwidth portion, uh, which is from 26.5 till 29.5 gigahertz. And uh, this part is called uh, simply millimeter wave. However, what is important, 5G, as you probably, as you know, is uh, uh, now uh, launched in the different uh, portions of spectrum. Also, uh, there are some uh, spectrum taken from other systems, uh, like 2.1 or 2.6 gigahertz. And uh, these uh, three, uh, well, spectrum portions, they are new. That's why I just uh, put it in the slide. And uh, where is the uh, border, simply? between the millimeter wave and between the other uh, wave. So we used to call um, for uh, cellular networks and for mobile systems, we used to call the spectrum sub six gigahertz, uh, while the millimeter wave is for sure above six gigahertz. And this could be a little bit misleading for uh, somebody new in the field because uh, for example, for 20, 8 gigahertz, uh, you can see wavelength, it is equal to mm, 10.7 millimeters. It means uh, it is, uh, well, in, term, in the tens of millimeters. However, for the lower spectrum, you have 8.57 uh, centimeters or even for 700 megahertz, 42.86 centimeter. So um, usually we use uh, the spectrum below six gigahertz. Now 5G is the first new standard, uh, which uh, well claim at least uh, that the 
26 point something uh, gigahertz spectrum will be used for mobile users. And in my talk, uh, I would like also to underline that uh, usually for sub six gigahertz, we have uh, urban macro case where the base station is mounted uh, over the roofs um, and it's called uh, urban macro case. However, in the second case, urban micro, the base station is mounted slightly below roofs. And this is also uh, pretty important for these two spectrum portions. Um, Moreover, um, the millimeter wave uh, is of great interest because uh, we have a uh, large uh, bandwidth uh, available then there. And uh, for example, this bandwidth is also much cheaper. For example, in uh, 2015, and uh, two gigahertz, uh, uh, the operator uh, paid uh, $700 per one hertz while in uh, 47 gigahertz, the price was only $2. So mm, that's also a um, pretty great difference. Um, now I would also like to introduce path loss uh, since maybe not everybody is uh, deeply in the field and this is pretty important uh, in my talk. So if we consider base station mounted somewhere and the mobile uh, station, which is user equipment, UE here, uh, then the path loss is uh, simply the difference between the transmitted power and the received power. So it means um, how much of power is uh, lost in the air in the transmission between the transmit antenna and receive antenna. This is the path loss. And this is important because if you um, uh, design the network, if you want to check the coverage or if you want to Mm, mm, uh, check uh, the quality of uh, link for the users. If you know the transmitted power and you have to know the transmitted power and if you know the path loss, then you can uh, simply mm, determine the received power, which is uh, crucial mm, for users. And uh, mainly in the every case, also in millimeter wave case, in wireless uh, propagation, we have indoor scenario and outdoor scenario. We have also mixed scenario, which is called outdoor to indoor. Uh, in my talk, uh, I will focus on outdoor scenario um, in my simulations. So if we consider the base station mounted somewhere in the city, as you could see in the left uh, side of uh, the screen, uh, then uh, you just uh, launch the power, you just transmit the wave. Uh, then uh, you have simply four possible interactions for uh, every wave. And the first is uh, the free space propagation, uh, where we have direct uh, transmission between the base station and the user. Second, uh, we have uh, reflection and transmission case, where the uh, signal um, touches the wall, touches the obstacle, the building, and some of the power is reflected and some of the power is transmitted mm, into the building. Uh, we call it then the penetration loss or a reflection loss. Third, uh, we also could have the diffraction case where the signal goes uh, through the wedge, either vertical or horizontal, and then the signal can bend in the, in the wedge and also some power is lost in that case. However, this is uh, pretty nice since uh, users which are shadowed, uh, which are uh, not uh, present in the line of sight uh, case, they could also be served. Finally, uh, fourth, we have also scattering, which is uh, the reflection with the um, angle, which is different than from the incident angle. So this could be understood as uh, the case that the wave is coming to the surface and then because of the surface roughness, it is uh, uh, scattered with the other uh, direction, uh, with the other uh, scattering angle, and we call it uh, diffuse scattering. Um, so the first case uh, which I mentioned is the free space loss. Uh, I would like to compare the millimeter wave free space loss and the uh, sub six gigahertz uh, free space loss. Um, the famous freeze formula where you have uh, received power related to the transmitted power 
uh, simply says that this relation, which is path loss, depends on the distance. Uh, so the farther we are from the mm, base station, uh, then uh, mm, our received power is decreased with the square of the distance. But also in this formula, we have lambda, which means that um, the higher the frequency, the lower the lambda. And then um, for the higher frequencies, the signal is more attenuated. And I compared in the table uh, three systems. The first one, 900 megahertz. This is uh, standard solar network frequency uh, nearly all over the world. Um, the freeze uh, loss per one kilometer distance is about uh, 91.5 decibel. Then for uh, 3.6 gigahertz, which is a uh, new allocated 5G new radio spectrum, uh, this loss in the same distance is uh, 103.6 decibels. And then finally, uh, for the millimeter wave, uh, 28 gigahertz, it is of uh, 121.4 decibels. Um, so you can see here that the loss between 900 megahertz and 28 gigahertz is uh, around uh, 30 decibel. That's probably a lot. However, there is also a good news in this topic. Since the uh, formula, the freeze formula, uh, consists also the antenna aperture, uh, which is lambda over 4 pi squared. And uh, it simply means that uh, the signal is not attenuated in the air. Uh, the wave is, uh, let's say, not properly received by the receive antenna because the antenna aperture simply means, as you can see in the picture, that means the surface uh, from which the antenna can collect the power. And then if we, if we can um, change the antenna aperture, uh, then we can also, uh, well, deceive a little bit the freeze attenuation. And uh, the answer on this is, of course, uh, the great topic of uh, MIMO and uh, multi-user MIMO. Here you can see on the right uh, the three sets of um, antenna arrays. It's uh, 2.2, 4.1, and 4.4. And you can see the more elements in the antenna array we use for beam forming, then the beam is uh, more narrow, which means it has greater directivity, which means the user in a given distance will collect greater amount of power. Second, we have the reflection loss and transmission loss. Uh, here you can see the um, base station and of course uh, the wall, the building. And the rule of thumb uh, says that uh, if the wave transmits through the obstacle of the size uh, similar to wavelength, then it is uh, significantly attenuated. Uh, so, if uh, the wavelength is greater than the obstacle, then it uh, quite easily can uh, propagate inside the buildings. However, if the wavelength is much lower than the obstacle width, then it is uh, significantly blocked. Of course, it doesn't mean that if you compare, for example, uh, 6 gigahertz uh, wave and the lambda is uh, around five centimeters there. It means that if you transmit over the wall equal uh, of the width with the width of 5.1 centimeter, then it is uh, blocked. But if the wall is 4.9 centimeter, it goes easily. Of course, it is uh, smoother. However, the rule exists. And um, if we compare the uh, reflection losses, uh, regarding the frequency and also the transmission losses, we could observe uh, the frequency dependence here. On the right side, you could see the at C document where uh, some penetration losses are given in a quite simple way uh, where they are, they are based also on the frequency. And you can see that uh, if we talk about wood or glass, uh, then there is no great dependence on the frequency with the penetration loss. However, if we uh, talk about concrete, uh, then um, the penetration loss is much more dependent on the frequency. And 
uh, in the millimeter wave, uh, the, we can assume that the wave is uh, even completely blocked. Um, moreover, uh, and this is one of the, I guess, uh, famous picture related to the uh, millimeter wave attenuation, the sources on the right side. Um, the measurement uh, equipment here was um, located in the degree of 45 uh, degrees uh, from the wall. And um, the guys who made these uh, measurements, they simply moved the, the transmit antenna and receive antenna along uh, this uh, wall. And they wanted to check uh, how uh, different um, walls or windows attenuate the uh, millimeter wave signal. And as you can see, for dressed stone wall, uh, first, uh, the attenuation was uh, quite significant. Uh, and second uh, it was quite unstable however if we consider window or a uh, buff stone uh, then uh, the attenuation was uh, lower and moreover quite stable uh, where, where when they are when they were moving uh, along this uh, wall so uh, the conclusion in the reflection losses is here the following um, we could observe uh, greater uh, losses, even uh, difference could be of uh, 20 decibels uh, regarding the materials. And um, the other thing also here is important that it is quite hard to measure. I mean, the penetration losses and reflection losses, uh, the exact values. Um, but uh, we can assume that the penetration losses, for example, they are of uh, 10 decibels different. Uh, for example, between uh, 30 gigahertz and 2.6 gigahertz. Uh, diffraction loss, uh, that's the next topic important in millimeter wave. Uh, here you can see the our faculty uh, premises. Uh, this is the measurement conducted with uh, Karolina Ushishin. Um This is the diffraction wedge on the right side. Mm. Maybe you could see my. Uh, on the right side, you could see the antenna. Uh, this is the uh, transmitter. Uh, the wavelength is, uh, sorry, the frequency here is exactly 28 gigahertz. So it is directed exactly to the wedge of the building. And this is the other view of this. And then uh, here there is uh, the other veg, I mean the other side of the same veg. And this is the receiver antenna. Mm, and uh, the measurement was the uh, related to the uh, what is the loss of the diffraction when we compare 2.45 gigahertz and 28 gigahertz. And the results are quite interesting. Here you can see uh, that uh, the dashed line, they are a theoretical line, uh, while the solid lines, they are measured uh, values. And the average uh, difference between the uh, measured values or theoretical values, uh, they are about mm, 10 decibels uh, here at least, 10 decibels. Of course, uh, the greater the diffraction angle. Uh, so uh, the more we are hidden by the wedge, the attenuation is greater of the diffraction. However, still uh, this uh, diffraction loss, it's, uh, it's not killing the propagation in the millimeter wave. It is bigger than in sub six gigahertz, but it is not killing um, the, uh, the case. And just to sum up the uh, diffraction, so we have 10 decibels difference. Uh, we could model this with, uh, well, a couple of methods. The Daegu method is the theoretical method for the diffraction modeling. We also have quite a popular Berg iterative model and a quite a detailed uh, UTD, GTD precise model. And scattering, uh, which is, uh, well, of great importance in the millimeter wave, uh, we shall consider the Rayleigh criterion for surface roughness, since um, if we have uh, 
millimeter wavelength, uh, we have a couple of millimeters. Then we compare the wavelength of the wave with the roughness of surface. And uh, if they are of the similar size, um, then the scattering plays a main role here. All right. Uh, now let's move to the uh, millimeter wave uh, channel modeling. Mm, so let's uh, move to the small city in northern Poland. Here you can see the Google Maps satellite view and um, you can see some buildings. Uh, if we have uh, some drones which are uh, flying uh, here and uh, then based on these uh, missions uh, we can have point cloud mm, uh, so this is the map uh, 3d map where the buildings and trees and foliage and uh, every car is uh, mm, here mm, present as a point you can see now a little bit uh, zooming in and then you can see single points then this point cloud is uh, changed into the um, digital map of this uh, scene and then you can see a 25 centimeters uh, accurate uh, model which is uh, the input for the ray tracer for the uh, detailed engine and uh, then if we mount here the antenna and the building uh, then we probably shall see the street uh, uh, along uh, which we can uh, propagate the wave and uh, the good news is that we don't have to um, think uh, more more a little bit about it it's because we can see simply uh, how it looks like this is the real photo and even the antenna is uh, put here that uh, you can uh, really imagine now the signal is going uh, here uh, along the street. Uh, the sea is just, uh, uh, well, uh, just behind this hill, the Baltic Sea. All right. And now um, I would like to move into the modeling. This is pretty important for the uh, planning uh, staff, for the engineers who plans uh, the networks. Um, so um, probably the older uh, remembers remember perfectly um, the famous Hata model. It was found in uh, mid eighties, and uh, that was uh, the model. Um, uh, given by the following uh, formula. Mm, of course, uh, this model is applicable to the uh, f uh, frequencies below 6 gigahertz. Probably the, mm, the basic HATA model is up to 2 gigahertz. The extension is up to 2.5 gigahertz. Uh, however, here, here I would like to compare this old model and I just um, uh, here um, mm, you have the formula and uh, the path loss depends on the frequency given in megahertz. You have some coefficients related to the base station height. Also mobile station height is included here. And finally, uh, D is also given in kilometers. That was the time that we uh, planned the networks uh, for kilometers. Now we have uh, tens, hundreds of meters. And then if we move, uh, if we put into the formula um, 30 meters for uh, base station height and uh, 1.5 meter for uh, the mobile station height, um, the formula is a little bit simplified. Uh, here we have three components, the one related to the distance, uh, the second is the constant value and the third related to the frequency given right now in gigahertz. And um, if we have the plot of this uh, in the city, uh, the base station is mounted here, it's a dot point A, uh, then um, uh, simply the path loss depends on the distance. Uh, so if you are the user and in you, if you are in the point B or C, which are of the same distance, then your path loss is exactly the same according to the HATA model. And this is uh, the simulation uh, result uh, for our uh, small city in northern Poland. Uh, you could remember, according to the HATA model, um, and so that's uh, irrespective of where we are, if we are uh, in the shadow of the building or if we are in the line of sight, 
uh, the path loss is similar. And of course, uh, the measurements uh, say uh, the opposite. That's uh, that can't be true. If you are in the line of sight, the red line, mm, probably your situation, wireless situation, is much better than if you are in the non-line of sight. Uh, here, uh, the measurement were conducted in uh, three streets: the blue, green, and black one. And uh, these, uh, here we are the results. Uh, the source is the METIS final report, really nice document. And uh, here you have uh, the measurements and theoretical lines for uh, six frequencies. I think the most interesting for us is uh, 26 gigahertz case E, where you have a line of sight path loss given in red. Uh, red circle, uh, these are the measurement points, well, however, the line red solid is the theoretical line. So um, in the line of sight case here, the path loss is uh, above 100 uh, decibel. Uh, for, for example, 200 meters, it is uh, around 105 or 110. Uh, decibel. However, in the non-line of sight cases, it is much lower. It, depend, it depends on the street. It could be even 140 or 50 decibel and depends on the street here. And this relation, I mean the difference between line of sight case and non-line of sight case exist, uh, exists in every, every case, uh, irrespective of the frequency. So, uh, why not to distinguish in the propagation model these two cases, line of sight and non-line of sight? And uh, this is the class of uh, loss and loss-aware empirical models where you have to um, know if you are, I mean, if the user is in the line of sight case or non-line of sight case, and then you have two formulas. Mm, and uh, uh, distance uh, dependence is different in these two cases. Line of sight, of course, is uh, more optimistic. And um, our sim simplified scenario with uh, base station mounted in point A and uh, locations of user in, in points B and C, and now uh, this, their situation is much, much different. If uh, C user is a non-line of sight case, so it's simply uh, well, shadowed by the, the building, then mm, then the path loss here is uh, much much greater. However, the user B is um, in the line of sight case, so uh, his attenuation is uh, a lower. Path loss is smaller, and this is the comparison to a previous uh, obsolete Hata model. All right, and this is the result for the loss and loss aware empirical models. Mm, so uh, right now, uh, there is a great difference between line of sight case and non-line of sight case. So if you uh, go along the street and the base station is mounted in the end here, your uh, wireless situation is much better, which, me which means simply that the path loss is lower than if you are in the non-line of sight uh, case here uh, this part of uh, well uh, the results is uh, related to the uh, building because the antenna is hidden a little bit in the building that's why here we have non line of sight case and uh, the comparison uh, between these two uh, simulation results are the following um, so uh, the millimeter magic of course is much more um, practical the third class of modeling, so the first was uh, empirical obsolete HATA model, the second line of sight, non line of sight aware model. The third class is uh, ray traced or ray launched modeling, which uh, involve, involves, of course, uh, the digital uh, scene of the city, digital uh, map of the area. And uh, here, the comparison of ray tracing and ray launching is given. 
On the left side, you have the uh, room, and ray tracing simply means that you simulate every single ray inside uh, the room, and you have the transmit and receive antennas, and you, um, based on the assumptions, uh, reflections uh, number, for example, or diffractions number, uh, you simulate um, each single ray. However, in the ray launching, you just launch the rays from the uh, transmit antenna and the alpha parameter, the density of rays is crucial uh, since the greater the density in the engine is, then uh, the greater uh, accuracy of results is given, of course, under the cost of uh, complexity, under the cost of uh, calculation complexity. And um, the envir environment resolution also is here pretty important. And this is the result from uh, WinProp Alter uh, software. You have the base station here. This is uh, uh, similar. The height of the base station is similar with the rooftops. And you can see uh, a couple of rays coming from the base station to the user located here and you have the diffracted rays and uh, reflected rays. So in my ray tracing results, uh, the scene is uh, of size uh, 460 meters per 280 meters. Um, then uh, we have urban micro case, uh, which means uh, the base station is mounted slightly below um, the buildings. Uh, the maximum building height is uh, 17 meters, uh, the average is uh, 15 meters, uh, the base station height is uh, 8 meters, and the transmitted power is uh, 20 uh, dBm. Uh, the results are given in the received power. Mm. So this is the um, ray tracing re results uh, for uh, zero reflections and uh, zero diffraction. Uh, so you can see nothing is uh, reflected simply. You have some foliage given in the uh, violet uh, color. This, these are the buildings. The scene is uh, simply cut in the given height. Um, so you can see here that you have some foliage attenuation only and nothing reflects. If we increase by one the reflection and the diffraction, then we have the following uh, scene. Um, so it looks like uh, it is much better if the user is in the non line of sight, then uh, he or she can simply collect much power, especially if uh, he or she is close to the antenna. Uh, then if we move to the two reflections and two diffractions, then uh, the number of rays is uh, much, much uh, denser. And uh, three reflections and three diffractions give us even a greater boost in the number of rays. Uh, we can see that the coverage is uh, right now uh, quite nice. So all cases together, let's compare them. And so if we have uh, here all cases together, of course, uh, the more interactions we use, the more reflections or diffractions we use, um, the greater accuracy of the scene. Um, all right. So this is ray tracing, ray launching uh, results for detailed network planning. And now a uh, few words about uh, millimeter wave adjustments. Uh, first, rain or snow. Now we have snow, at least in my country, uh, right now, which uh, is starting to become more and more unusual. Um, so if we have rain of, for example, uh, 100 millimeters per hour, this is uh, really heavy rain. And if we consider the frequency of, uh, for example, 100, uh, sorry, if, 30, uh, that's 30 gigahertz, uh, then the attenuation is around 20 uh, decibel per kilometer, which means uh, it is two decibel per 100 meter uh, or four per 200 meters. So uh, that becomes uh, 
it becomes to be significant value when we uh, want to um, find a link budget uh, then we shall uh, include also the uh, possibility of uh, rain attenuation of course uh, the rain or snow uh, is uh, quite important for uh, direct uh, links in millimeter wave since uh, these frequency frequencies are in current use in the backhaul links, uh, not only in 5G but also in the previous systems. The uh, backhaul uh, direct links, uh, when we have two antennas uh, with great directivity, and the operators uh, they find the link between uh, one base station and the other and send all of the traffic from one base station to the other, for example, central base station. So. Uh, that's uh, quite important there. Uh, here uh, it is uh, not as of so great importance, however, it becomes visible. Mm -hmm. And uh, if we compare uh, this uh, 2 decibel per 100 meter uh, to 3.6 gigahertz, uh, then we have uh, the attenuation there is only 0 0.03 decibel per kilometer. So it is completely invisible for operator and uh, users. Also, gas attenuation becomes uh, visible in millimeter wave. Uh, fortunately for uh, the um, uh, 30 gigahertz it is uh, really really low it uh, becomes uh, well visible in a greater set of frequencies uh, by the way the predictions are that in the future systems including 6g which is uh, well which is now in the research uh, the predictions are uh, we will use uh, higher frequencies than uh, 28 or 30 gigahertz so probably this is the time to um, well touch this topic if you look into 28 gigahertz the attenuation is uh, 0 0.05 decibel per kilometer however for 60 gigahertz it is uh, 20 decibel uh, it's here 20 decibel per kilometer so it's uh, still uh, well quite a lot and uh, foliage attenuation um, uh, probably you remember today i mentioned that uh, a rule of thumb says that uh, the wavelength should be compared with the obstacle width and if, if the wavelength is uh, of the similar size of the obstacle then uh, we have uh, well greater attenuation so it also is related to the foliage if our wavelength is uh, one millimeter or uh, uh, 10 millimeters which is one centimeter then the foliage which is uh, quite often of that uh, well size it starts uh, blocking a millimeter wave and uh, in the ITU recommendation uh, P.833 uh, you can find that in woodland um, for 2 gigahertz the attenuation is 0 0.4 decibel per meter however in uh, for 30 gigahertz it is of uh, attenuation is equal to 6 decibel uh, per meter so uh, it's not a milled scatterer as it was for the sub 6 gigahertz cases now in millimeter wave it is uh, well pretty important to include foliage into the uh, simulation and uh, right now I have the film uh, which compares uh, two things. Uh, the first is the foliage attenuation. Here you can see top side view on the scene and the purple is uh, the uh, foliage. And here on the right side is the side view of the same scene. Uh, the purple again is the foliage. This is the real, of course, the scene, uh, the real foliage. Mm taken from the digital map and also the precipitation the rain is given here uh, the description is uh, here at the bottom uh, so let me check if it works
So now we have 3.5 gigahertz. Uh, now 3.5 with rain, the difference is not very significant. Now we move into 26, you can see a greater attenuation because of uh, foliage and with rain it is also a little bit slower, I mean uh, attenuation is greater. And finally if, uh, 64 gigahertz, uh, the coverage is really limited. If the rain comes into play it is even uh, more limited. So uh, that's the film. And the uh, final topic is uh, AI-based channel modeling. Uh, here I would like to put only a few thoughts in the field uh, since uh, the artificial intelligence and machine learning it is coming uh, to wireless field also, to the network planning also. And so a few things. First, about the application in the wireless field, um, so in principle machine learning or the artificial intelligence it is uh, inferring uh, based on data if you have data uh, the more precise and clean data the better then based on the data you just uh, infer how the system works but in the reality, I mean, in the wireless field, uh, we have quite often nice models. We could model how the wave uh, interacts. Uh, we could model uh, exactly the mm, working of the whole engine, the working of the field. And uh, the AI here may significantly reduce the complexity, com computer uh, well, computational complexity. Um, and this is probably the main point here. Then, um, in the ideal case, uh, we shall have the measurement data, uh, plenty of the measurement, real, uh, well-prepared data, and then we put this measurement data into the engine, and based on this, we could uh, produce the path loss results. Mm, and this is in current research and application stage. Uh, people all over the world, they publish papers, they implement artificial uh, intelligent uh, solutions, uh, AI-based solutions. Mm, and I have here two examples of uh, application of uh, this AI in the field. First, uh, the diffraction loss prediction. Um, the case here is that um, I mentioned the diffraction. So that's the case in Korea uh, where there are some hills, some mountains, and this is the model, uh, theoretical model for the diffraction. And these are the measurement results in this uh, hilly terrain in the Korea. And the uh, guys, um, Lee and Park, they simply put the measurement data into the engine and then just inferred uh, with the uh, proposed method uh, what is the diffraction loss. And here uh, there are six colors in the plot. Uh, so the main one is the blue, which is the measurement data. You can see that it is of a great change. And the proposed uh, neural networks uh, based uh, solution is uh, the red uh, one, the red curve. And uh, their um, error was uh, around uh, three or four decibels when compared to the other methods, theoretical one, the error was seven, six decibels. And this is uh, one of the examples how the, well, deep learning simply uh, can uh, work in the, in the field. The second one is given by my student, Supavat Tamsri, uh, which is quite talented guy. Uh, he built a uh, 3D scene of the, by the way, this is uh, old market square in Poznań, and he built the stage, and uh, he learned a model. Um, he just uh, used ray tracing here with the diffraction uh, reflections also, uh, and based on the results of the diffraction and the reflection, he just found the path loss in uh, different uh, cases. And then he put the gradient ascent method with Adam Optimizer. And uh, then he planned uh, the small base stations in this area. Now I hope it works. 
Okay. Mm, so, uh, based on the random set of users, uh, blue dots, and based on their uh, link qualities, uh, which is related to the uh, propagation, uh, he found the locations of uh, base stations, uh, small uh, cells, uh, they are red one. And this is uh, the example how the algorithm uh, looks for the base best solution, best uh, location of base station. Uh, this is based mainly, mainly on the line of sight case, uh, non-line of sight case, is here under uh, well further uh, stage and then you can find in this link uh, his work uh, and uh, read more details so just to sum up mm, honestly speaking this algorithm here it is not uh, ai uh, well in principle since uh, there was no uh, data measurement data or other data uh, based for learning and finding the positions of the base station. That was uh, uh, the, well, enhanced optimization problem uh, where there were, they, they were many iterations with a gradient ascent method, which is, well, uh, one of the, well, probably well-known methods in the machine learning field. And uh, that's the case that, um, with these uh, optimization methods, machine learning tools and AI tools, we can uh, faster get, uh, well, best or close to best solutions. And uh, this is a new tool in our field. And um, I think that now it's the time to learn this new tool, which is simply uh, used for solving problems. Um, so, if you have great data, for example, uh, ITU recent challenge uh, put uh, LiDAR data. Um, LiDAR is the a, a kind of the radar where you have the scene, a 3 dig digital scene, what the base station can see. And so, they compared this LiDAR data and uh, the case was to find the beam uh, pattern because in the um, millimeter wave and the MIMO the beam uh, selection or beam uh, um, finding is one of the crucial uh, problems right now um, so if you have uh, nice data then uh, you can go simply with AI um, also, the AI is uh, maybe used if uh, you want to find uh, not uh, well-modeled cases like user mobility prediction, um, it changes every time, especially right now in the COVID time, it changes significantly because of more, um, uh, well, remote work. And then also the traffic prediction based on time and space related data could be, could be done here. But if we go into the um, wireless modeling uh, field, uh, my personal point of view is that uh, it may often uh, fasten the finding uh, solutions to the given problems. And now this is, uh, well, the time to work on this and to find uh, these uh, new solutions. And conclusions. All right, so first, uh, detailed modeling is uh, pretty important in the millimeter wave, especially if we have a dense urban scenario, then uh, it is even more important if uh, foliage attenuation or dense, well, I just mentioned it, if, if the foliage attenuation is included. Um, of course, if we want to have higher precision, uh, then uh, greater computation resources are needed. Uh, however, innovation comes unexpectedly quite often. And maybe AI, which is around the corner, may change the game we are playing at. And maybe with AI, we can uh, simplify the implementation of uh, a precise modeling and uh, we can simply make it faster, simpler and better. That's uh, my final conclusion. Uh, thank you very much for the attendance.